Is teleportation possible? Well, the short answer to that question is yes. In fact, it's already been done, but more on that later. When we narrow down the question to, is teleportation possible for large objects, and what about humans, things get a little more interesting. Before we start, remember to give this video a thumbs up, and if you're new here, subscribe for more science and science fiction based videos. What do we already know about teleportation? Let's start this one by getting a little more specific when it comes to what we physically mean by teleportation. When we boil it down, there are three types of teleportation methods. The first being when an object or person completely disappears, then reappears in a different place. Think apparition in Harry Potter. The second is when an object or a person transports particle by particle through some sort of machine and ends up in another place. Think Star Trek. And the third is the one where scientists have actually made some significant strides, and is likely the only real way teleportation is physically possible. The simplest way to describe it is scanning the object or person, then sending the information to another place, and having the information create a genuine copy of the original, molecule by molecule. Before we dive into that, let's acknowledge that as of now in science, there is no way to replicate the Harry Potter or Star Trek forms of teleportation. But as I said, scientists have made significant strides in the third type of teleportation. So how does it work? It all starts with the simple concept of quantum entanglement, also referred to as spooky action at a distance by one Albert Einstein. By the way, I lied, the concept is in no way simple, but let's see if we can bring it down to an understandable level. Think of two particles as twins, and despite how much distance is between them, they will always be twins. The particles share an extremely strange and, as of now, unexplainable bond. As long as you know the information about one, you can know the information about the other. Again, this is regardless of the amount of distance between the two. Look at it like this. The twins are more like arch enemies. Whatever one is doing, the other is doing the exact opposite. Scientists measure this in terms of spin. If one particle is spinning up, then we automatically know that the other particle is spinning down. This can also get a little more in depth. For instance, if we knew one was spinning up and to the right, we would also know that the other would be spinning down and to the left. But here is where things get tricky. When observed, quantum particles change, and when unobserved, they are simultaneously in all possible states, which is referred to as a superposition. While this fact can prove a challenge for scientists when trying to measure the particle's properties, it can also be very useful in a strange way. We'll get to that a bit later in the video. Scientists found a way to get around this problem by adding a third particle to the mix and indirectly measuring them together. In simple terms, the sender adds particle 1 into a box with a third particle. Then, the sender can indirectly observe these particles and learn some information, but not all the information about the particles. This is called a bell measurement. While the sender still doesn't have all the information because they can't look directly at the particles, they will still have enough information to achieve some very complicated algebra. Then, the sender can send this information to the receiver. Once the receiver has this information, they too can prepare some complicated algebra, but they still need one vital piece of information, the actual state of the first particle which means the sender will now look, still indirectly, at the particle and send that piece of information to the receiver. Through this process and some more complicated math, the second particle will then take on the state of the first particle. Now, this doesn't exactly sound like teleportation, but let's say the first particle is actually a group of particles that make up, say, a banana. The information that is being teleported to the jumbled and tangled particles would be the makeup of the banana. So, once those particles take on the state of that banana, it would technically be teleported. But why wouldn't it just be a copy? Well, during the process, the banana on the sending end would turn into a giant pile of particles that are the furthest thing from its original form. In other words, it would be completely destroyed. So this is basically the science behind what we know about teleportation. Of course, in the simplest, shortest way possible, I could describe it. But where's the proof? Is this just a theory? Well, that brings us to part two of this video. Have there been any successful experiments? The first successful teleportation experiment was in 1998. 
Physicists at the California Institute of Technology partnered with two European groups and proved the teleportation theory as described by IBM possible. They managed to successfully teleport a photon, which, as most of you know, is a particle of energy that carries light. This experiment teleported the photon just one meter in distance, but as we discussed earlier, the theory should work regardless of the distance between the entangled particles. Well, in 2004, the distance of a successful teleportation increased to 600 meters, then a few years later to 16 kilometers, then 97 kilometers, and as of 2017, in perhaps the most impressive feat for quantum teleportation, Chinese scientists managed to teleport the quantum state of a photon from Tibet to a specially designed quantum satellite in orbit around the Earth for a distance of 1,400 kilometers or about 870 miles. Again though, if the theory states that teleportation should work regardless of distance, then why did it take us so long to get that far? And why is it so impressive? The answer lies in the initial quantum entanglement. Before you can use two particles that are quantumly entangled, you first must entangle them, and then separate them to the two points you wish to teleport them. And getting particle B into space can prove quite a challenge. The Chinese scientists fired a laser beam carrying one end of the entangled particles into space. Sounds easy, right? Well, this is quantum teleportation, so it definitely isn't. Remember earlier when we learned that if an entangled particle is observed, the entanglement is ruined because the particle changes? Well, when sending the particle all the way into orbit, you risk it interacting with objects and particles and therefore breaking the entanglement. To get around this issue, the scientists actually sent out millions of photons, and out of that, only 911 made it to the satellite undisturbed. All in all, the experiment ended up being a success, and there are many examples of successful quantum teleportation. But what does that mean for us? How can we use this technology? And will humans ever be able to teleport with this theory? Is it likely we will ever be able to harness the technology for large objects and everyday use? When we think of teleportation, we think of moving people or perhaps objects such as your suitcase to different locations without having to go through the exhaustive process of actually moving. We'll start by talking about that, but there is a much less obvious use of quantum teleportation specifically that we could see implemented within our lifetime, and we will get to that shortly. To begin, the application of the technology so far exists just in the quantum world. Weirdly enough, the quantum world seems to have different laws than our macroscopic world. The macroscopic world being the objects that can be viewed by the naked eye. The body of laws that apply to the quantum world is referred to as quantum mechanics. This means the first challenge of teleportation would be to imitate a similar situation that would work outside of the world of quantum mechanics. As of now, that seems pretty unattainable for physicists, but for the video's sake, I'm going to assume that in the near future, we do find a way to replicate the effect. If we used this method, we would still not be sending the object itself, just the information of the state of the object, while destroying the original. So we could teleport your suitcase full of all your belongings to your vacation destination, but in reality, it would just be an exact replica, not the original. But if this is just an object and you can't tell the difference, who cares? Provided you're not sentimentally attached to, say, a baseball glove handed down to you from your grandfather, it basically works exactly how you would want it to. The real ethical challenge comes when we talk about teleporting humans. We can get to that shortly, but first, the practical use of quantum teleportation that real scientists are trying to develop as we speak. A quantum internet. A quantum internet would be based in quantum cryptography. Quantum cryptography would be the most secure way to send information that exists in the world of computers today. The quantum internet itself would theoretically exist within our current form of internet. Those who wished to use the quantum internet would be able to log into it via the internet internet, and then take advantage of the hyper-secure quantum network. Quantum computers could send encrypted information in the form of qubits, or in long form, quantum bits. A qubit is similar to a classical bit, but instead of being in one state, a one or a zero, it can be physically realized in a two-state device. But enough about the actual technology. Why would it be so secure? 
quantum cryptography doesn't actually teleport the information being sent. Rather, it teleports the key needed to unlock the encrypted information. In the current system, encryption keys have been known to be intercepted and copied while on their journey to the desired recipient. In part one of this video, I mentioned how a particle that changes when observed would be very useful in some cases, and this is some cases. The key would literally be impossible to intercept because if it was observed, it would change. And even if someone found a way around that, the receiver on the other end would see the effect on their entangled particle in real time. This would be the ultimate security in the computer world. The challenge for this just lies in creating a mass quantum network. The lead of the Chinese team that teleported a photon to their very own quantum satellite says he has plans to launch more quantum satellites in the next five years. By 2030, he hopes to have quantum communications spanning multiple countries. That means in just 11 years as of this video's release, we very well may see teleportation being used as a form of hyper-secure computer networks. Not exactly humans being teleported to Mars, but hey, still pretty impressive. But speaking of humans, it's time to get into part four. Could it ever work for humans? We could start by addressing the obvious ethical problems with teleporting a human using the current method of teleportation. If we were to teleport a human, the same rules would apply. The human themselves would not be teleported, but the information about the exact makeup of the human would be transported to a set of particles that would then take the form of the now destroyed human on the other end. Now, this turns into a bit of a philosophical conversation. Say the teleportation was successful. There are two main things to think about at this point. Is there such a thing as a soul? How do we really know when something is actually alive? Theoretically, we would assume active brain circuits qualify as a quality to life, and perhaps a pumping heart would mean alive in the physical sense, but we've never tested the idea of transferring one life to another body. What does that even mean? Would the body on the other side actually be alive? If all of the brain functions and body functions work, does that qualify? The second thing we have to think about is what it means to be truly you. If successful teleportation took place and the new working body on the other side was fully cognizant, does that mean that it is still the same human that was on the other side before teleportation? Or does that human die and then an exact replica lives on to take their place? These aren't necessarily questions that can be answered with science. Like I said, this is more of a philosophical debate. I'd be curious to know what your take on the issue is though. Let me know in the comments below. There is, however, a few issues that arise in terms of science when we discuss the idea of human teleportation. For one, we mentioned earlier that the macroscopic world and the quantum world have some differences in terms of laws. Just as it would be, as of now, essentially impossible to teleport a macroscopic object, the same rules apply to macroscopic beings. Meaning, as of now, the technology we understand doesn't allow for human teleportation. If we did, however, find a way to get around that, we would need some pretty amazing computers to pull it off, considering that for each human, the computer would have to analyze all of the atoms that make up a human body, and that's more than a trillion trillion. It's hard to imagine a processor that strong, but then again, look how far computers have come just in the past 50 years. But there's one more problem I wanted to get at. Assuming we figure out how to bypass these two issues, every human teleportation would be a substantial risk. The human body is very complex and extremely deliberate. Even the slightest mix-up of a single molecule could lead to severe neurological or physiological damage. There could be no margin of error at all if we ever wanted to really use the technology. That in itself would be a difficult feat. What are the predictions made by scientists on the possible future of teleportation? If you've ever watched the Discovery or History Channel for more than a few minutes, you'll recognize the physicist Michio Kaku. Kaku has earned a reputation as a very optimistic scientist. He has become a controversial figure in the physics world, as on one end, he has brought interest into the scientific world to the public, and on the other, he has somewhat exploited and exaggerated real science in the name of publicity. On the matter of teleportation, he has publicly stated that he personally believes at our rate of advancement and the information we already know about the technology, it is likely we will see full human teleportation in just a few decades. In an interview with Big Think, he stated, in the coming years, we do expect to be able to teleport molecules, maybe water and carbon dioxide. And after that, who knows? 
maybe even DNA. He did also clarify that although it may be possible, it comes with many challenges that would need to be fixed. To throw a less controversial scientist in, Dr. Mary Jacqueline Romero from the School of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Glasgow also has a pretty optimistic view on the future of teleportation. On the matter, she stated, Teleporting a person atom by atom will be very difficult, but perhaps developments in chemistry or molecular biology will allow us to do it more quickly. The good thing about teleportation is that there is no fundamental law telling us that it cannot be done, and with technical advances, I would estimate teleportation that we see in the films will be with us by 2080. As great as that sounds, there are just as many scientists who say we will never see human teleportation, as it is physically impossible. For example, scientist Frank Haley has gone on the record to say that due to the complexity of the human body, it is safe to say human teleportation will never be possible. His very detailed article for Slate covers all of the reasons he is confident it will never happen. But then again, many of the greatest scientific advancements were laughed at in their time. In conclusion, teleportation is possible, and it has already been done. But the science behind movie-like applications is still very much up in the air. Remember though, the strides science has made in teleportation have only been made in the past few decades. Give it a few more and who knows what will be. Maybe there will be human teleportation in the year 2080. Maybe it really is impossible. But as of now, no one can say for sure. What do you think? Are you optimistic? I'd love to hear everyone's ideas in the comment section.